My name is Steph Evans and I'm the lead FEA engineer at Evotech CAE Limited. This video makes up a tutorial from the 101 series and is focused on a number of aspects of wanding modelling and FEA within Apex. Okay, so in this tutorial we're going to look at some thin slender structures which lend themselves to uh, beam type representation uh, for modelling and downstream analysis. So we've got some CAD geometry into the Apex environment and you can see if we look in the model tree we've broken that CAD down into three discrete, discrete regions. We have a grey hollow tubular section, a blue square section and a larger diameter hollow red tubular section. So we've um, organised the model in such a way that we can turn the visibility on and off of those regions very quickly. So for this first exercise we're going to take the three-dimensional tubular geometry first of all hide uh, the entities we don't need and then we're going to simply create some nodes at the center uh, center locations of the holes that make up or the, s the arcs that make up the ends of the tubes so quickly cl clicking through the model and creating those those center points we're taking the geometry out of view just leaving the nodes in position and back into geometry creation within Apex so we can create splines or poly curves so in this case uh, poly curve is effectively a piecewise linear curve so effectively picking the points or the nodes in order and generating the curves that we need to build the resultant uh, front element mesh so we can see with transparency turned on and then taking off the, uh, the solids we can see that we've got some curved sections so in this instance we're using the spline uh, function within the curve generation tool to pick out the um, discrete center points and now we've got uh, straight and curved lines representing each one of those tubular sections so looking specifically at the new cur curves that have been generated within the model uh, model browser uh, turning off the solid geometry and then coloring the um, each discrete curve we can see that Many of these curved entities are not yet joined together and of course we need to join them together in terms of our FEA model build. So into the geometry tools and we can quickly drag the vertices uh, from one curve using the follower guidelines to snap entities together and we repeat this process until we've tied everything together as, as required. Uh, so just showing you a couple of examples here and then finally when we've joined everything together we have a single curve shown in the model browser tree which represents a joined set of uh, curves and vertices which, which represent the full uh, one dimensional um, structural definition. So once we've got those curves defined we can go into the mesh uh, curve mesh uh, definition 25 mm millimeter edge length uh, create the nodes and elements uh, for the full region. We don't need to equivalence at common vertices because the, the underlying parent geometry curve was, was tied together uh, and if we look at the tubular definition the transparency turned on we can see we've got a good representation of the center lines. So once we've got the 1D element mesh we can create uh, our 1D beam type properties so we're going to create in this case from the library of apex uh, sections a hollow round section a hollow tubular section so we put in the outer uh, radius and the thickness of the wall section and we can see the section properties are updated and we can we can see uh, things like second minimum of area um, torsional values etc etc so once we've got our sections created we need to define where those sections are relating to the model through the use of a span so that's effectively just associating a section with the FE representation uh, so quickly highlighting those entities and we can turn on the um, 2D or 3D uh, beam section display and see the resultant section that's been created so we can marry that up with the underlying CAD geometry and see we've got a good representation um, for the full system certainly for the, the round tubular sections so the uh, next section we're going to look at is a square hollow section so slightly different approach so previously we created um, nodes at center points and then joined those up with lines what we're going to do here is first measure the sections uh, 
uh, so using the, the simple um, measurement tools in Apex we can see we've got 25.4 mil overall uh, dimension and then we're simply going to use the mid surface tool to offset the faces of the geometry to create an intersecting uh, or two intersecting planes or surfaces uh, where we're going to define our 1D mesh about so uh, you can see those uh, surfaces have been created of course we're using a straight bar in this or straight beam in this example but we could equally do that for a curved beam with no issue so we split those surfaces to get our 1D line generation at the center of the section and then just using the curve mesh tools we can uh, create those entities or the, the, the 1D beam element entities and we can see that the mesh is generated in this view just coming out the beam section tools so once we have the mesh defined again we need to create a section so in this case using the standard beam library within Apex so we're going to use a hollow cross uh, hollow square cross section um, so we uh, input the particular values if you notice we're using names that represent the parts within the model browser tree so we've got good control over, over what we're doing so again 25 mil or 25.4 mil square section with a 2 mil wall thickness uh, we can see the section properties and then we're going to define how that section sits on the underlying mesh with the use of a span so again we put the name of the span into the input box and pick the section that we're interested in and then simply assign that section to the underlying FE entities that we've, that we've created and you can see the section appears um, common well a common display over the top of the geometry and if you if you look closely you'll see that the section orientation is slightly misaligned with the underlying CAD definition so what we can do in here is we can um, specify a rotation or uh, orientation vector or rotation I should say uh, for that section to rotate the um, the FE entity to match up with the underlying CAD so we've measured this previously and we, we're rotating one end by five degrees um, we can do the same for both ends uh, and we can put in offsets as well so we're just looking at X and uh, sorry one and two uh, direction offsets and we get a live update of the section property as we make those changes so just just an example to show you how those offsets work we're going to take them back off for the, uh, the, the the original model definition so we work around the model with this concept of creating one the entities sections and applying those sections to the underlying uh, mesh and we've simply mirrored the geometry, the 1D geometry, about a common plane. So we now have a single entity which represents the full 1D mesh, uh, 1D piece of geometry. And we've got the associated uh, section definitions. Uh, we can display them in 3D and see how we've got good control, both in terms of display, modification, color, etc., etc. So we, we've, uh, we've got a good handle on what the model's doing. So once we're happy with the model build, we can do a quick analysis verification. So in this case, we've just done a free, free normal modes analysis and looking at various different modes within the model uh, just to understand if things are tied together properly. So once we've done that verification, we're going to look at some static loading. Um, so simple um, definition, we've got some constraints at the back end of the, uh, the space frame and, and a torsion load applied at the front. We run the analysis and we can see the, um, uh, the structural deformation, uh, various different um, views uh, straightforward with an apex of course and turning the 2d section on along with the displacement we can see how the overall structure is, is deforming um, so once we've uh, again verified that we're happy with that displacement we can start to look at more detailed model output so in this case looking at section stresses so again for the circular and square sections we've got a very nice uh, three-dimensional display of the, the section and how it relates to the underlying geometry and the underlying mesh we can put on a hotspot display to see where our peak stresses are in this case so for the torsion case we'd expect them to be a bit joint near the front of the structure where the loads applied and once we have um, happy with the stresses we can look at other things as well so we've got vector plots in this case looking at beam element forces um, axial force and two shear planes and then we can look at uh, beam moments again um, torsional uh, moments and then uh, moments about two different unique or orthogonal planes so we can make an assessment of what the structure is doing in terms of the uh, the overall load distribution, load path uh, beam force and moments and the influence on the stress across the section okay so slightly different example here so we're going to illustrate now 
the previous example was based on geometry which had been brought in from an external CAD system and then um, manipulated to give us the, the 1D truss like structure that we want. Uh, in this particular uh, example we're looking at geometry we're creating with an apex so we've just sketched out a 2D square shape um, generated curves between those points deleted the underlying surface and we've now got a uh, the, the makings of a, a truss like structure which we can uh, ultimately um, generate transform and then tie together to give us a uh, full uh, geometry definition for the, the full structure uh, so some of the simple job, uh, geometry transformation tools within Apex and now we're just using the uh, piecewise lin linear uh, curve generation tool to just tie those vertices together with underlying 1D geometric entities. So we have our cube structure if you like, we're ultimately building a, a cantilever or a truss type uh, arrangement uh, for, a, for a much larger section. So we're just copying that truss um, cell, if you like, across, and then building up the geometry to give us our uh, full definition. Of course, we've used a uh, particular section definition in this case. So for verification, we go into analysis readiness and run a normal modes analysis uh, very quickly, given the, the pr pretty small size of this model. And then we can check the, the mode shapes uh, as, as required. And then we can, if we're happy with those, we're, we're then able to put static or dynamic loading onto the structure to, to understand the, the, the real world response. Okay, and then finally we're looking at a 2D plate. Uh, so it's a, a, a 2D shell element plate with 1D beam stiffness, which is sort of typical of a standard aerospace type application. So we've got the, um, the beam orientation set to zero at the moment. So just simply by modifying the element orientation and offset, we can quickly snap the um, the structure or the, the 1D display to give us uh, the offsets that are required and then in post-processing we can post-process the 2D stress output and then the 1D stress output as required. Okay, thanks for watching this tutorial. Be sure to keep an eye out for the remaining tutorials in the 101 series to illustrate how Apex can help with your FEA process.